Hi everyone, welcome back or welcome to my channel. My name's Lizzie and for those of you who may be new here, I make videos about dressmaking and sewing and I haven't been around for a while. I've had kind of an accidental break from YouTube for a couple of months. It's been based on a couple of different factors. Mostly it's been that I've been well, I've been really busy, but I've been really busy for two different reasons. I've been really busy in my day job, which has just meant I've been knackered and had no energy or time to do things in the evenings. And at the weekends, I've been socialising. We're really lucky in the UK at the moment. I mean, touch wood, let's hope it lasts. But at the moment, we are allowed to socialise with friends and family. We went through a phase where we could only socialise outdoors, now we're also allowed to do a little bit of indoor socialising as well. So actually I've had a really lovely couple of months catching up with friends and family at the weekends, which has been brilliant. And it does mean that actually I haven't been very productive in terms of sewing because I normally do loads of my sewing in the evenings actually, so the weekend plans I've had wouldn't normally have messed up my sewing progress. Um, but I haven't had any evenings because I've been working late, which has been rubbish. But I am feeling inspired and I'm really wanting to get stuck in again with some sewing. So I've been buying some fabrics and I want to show them to you and talk you through what I'd like to make. So these are, mo there's a couple of new things that I've bought, but I've also shopped my stash and pulled out a couple of fabrics that I want to prioritise on my up and coming sewing projects list and hopefully get sewn up quite soon. So, first things first, this lovely blue fabric is a cotton twill by Robert Kaufman and I bought it from Sew Me Sunshine. Um, in terms of the details, it was £7.25 per half metre and I bought three metres of this to make some uh, True Bias lander pants. Um, it's 100% cotton twill, it's 112 centimetres wide and it's 267 GSM. Now you can tell that I'm a little bit out of kilter with my sewing and video schedule because actually the lander pants are the one project I've been consistently working on during Me Made May and they are very nearly finished. So I will be showing those to you hopefully really soon. Um, for context this is the pattern. I'm sure lots of you will be familiar with the True Bias lander pants. I've had this pattern on my to sew list for such a long time. Um, yeah, and it's basically a pair of high-waisted trousers. It's got some lovely, it's got four buttons down the front, a nice um, wide waistband with belt loops, and some good deep pockets on the front. And they're just like a really stylish, but also casual pair of wide leg trousers. Um, I'm excited about those. But as you can see, I've got loads of fabric left over, like loads. And I'm pretty sure I stuck quite closely to the fabric requirements. Let me see. Yeah, it said, for my size, it says you need three meters, or 2.8 meters to three meters to make the version that I made, but I've got a meter and a half left over. So, I wanna make something else with it. And I'm not sure if a metre and a half is quite enough, so I need to look up a few patterns. But I kind of want to make like a jacket, a denim jacket style of jacket, if you know what I mean. I've seen a few patterns around and I've got a few pinned on my Instagram. You know in Instagram you can like save images into folders a bit like Pinterest, I love that function. So I've got my eye on a few patterns, yeah, to make a like a denim jacket style jacket. I mean, it might be a bit much to wear the lander pants in this on the bottom half and a jacket in this on the top half. It's giving me like double denim vibes, although this isn't denim, this is cotton twill and it's in this lovely petrol blue as opposed to being a denim, but that could either be a really strong look or a really like over the top look. But I also have been considering making like a tailored smart gilet with these leftovers. I think I've got enough fabric because it wouldn't require any sleeves and again I've not actually got any patterns in mind so let me know if any of you have any if any patterns spring to mind but I'm thinking something that has like a smart collar and sort of a lapel and that is straight and would come past my bum so sort of like a three-quarter length um, just like an open single-breasted gilet, so like a sleeveless coat or a sleeveless blazer I guess, 
And again, I'm kind of thinking that over the top of the lander pants with like a really smart white frilly like puffy sleeved blouse underneath it could be a really strong look we'll see those are my various ideas that i have for this leftover cotton twill next up i have a knit fabric a ribbed knit that is also in this lovely petrol blue color so it pretty much matches the cotton twill the robert kaufman cotton twill from semi sunshine this isn't an accident, this is on purpose, but this is actually a fabric from my stash. Now, I'll put a picture in to remind you what it looks like, but I actually have already used this fabric. This fabric is leftovers, um, and I used this fabric to make a Tilly the Buttons Freya top a few years ago. Now, this is a mottled rib knit from myfabrics.co.uk. They still have it in stock, I think, so I'll try and link it below. And it's £8.95 a metre, it's 80% polyester, 12%, um, sorry, 15% viscose, 5% spandex, and it's 145 centimetres wide. Despite having quite a high polyester content, it's really nice and soft and I find it really nice to wear. And again, the pattern um, fabric requirements were clearly a little on the generous side because I've got quite a bit of this left over from when I made the Freya top. So what I want to make with this is a true bias Nikko top. I don't have a paper pattern for the Nikko, but I'll show you my little pattern card. I make these little pattern cards for all of my um, PDF patterns, so I can just flick through them. And I want to make view A, which is the sleeveless top. So it's got the, it's a pattern that's got like a high neck. It's actually really similar to the Tilly Buttons Freya top when it's in top version, but you can make the Niku in a dress as well. Um, I always say Niku instead of N Nico or Nico. It's because I've got a friend called Niku, so I get a bit confused, but what I mean is the true bias, Nico. Um, yeah, and I want to make a sleeveless ribbed knit high neck top and I want to make it to go with my lander pants because I think a sleeveless high neck top tucked into the lander pants could be a really good look and actually it's really similar. I'm obviously influenced by the pattern envelopes because that's like what the model is wearing on this pattern envelope and I like that look and I'm into the whole look of wearing one colour top to bottom. I think it can be really like, can make you look nice and elongated and slim and I like quite simple outfits in terms of colour and pattern. So that's the plan for this one. And this has been hanging around in my like leftover fabrics box for years. So it'll be really good to use that up. I often find that I end up with scraps from sewing projects that are too small to make like anything particularly substantial with but too big to throw away so I'm looking forward to getting this sewn up. The next fabric that I would like to show you is very special because it is a Liberty Tana Lawn and I bought it in their sale. They had quite a big sale across a lot of lines on their website um, a few weeks ago and I was browsing and Liberty, I see other people sewing with Liberty Lawn and I love the kind of things they make but a lot of the time the prints aren't quite my style and in reality I know they have a huge range of different kinds of prints but a lot of the Liberty prints are quite kind of floral, ditzy, small scale prints and I think they're gorgeous on other people but whenever I think about myself wearing them I'm not quite sure. So I've always sort of had an eye out on Liberty. I have actually got one dress that I've made in a Liberty lawn um, and it, it's not a ditzy floral. I'll, again, I'll try and put a picture in. But it's a fabric that my mum actually treated, to, treated me to on a birthday trip to, it was one of the big sewing shows in London. I can't remember which one it was, whether it was the Great British Sewing Bee Live maybe, or maybe it was a different one. Um, but yeah, my mum bought me that fabric and I made a dress in it. It was actually one of my first ever pattern hacks. It's a mixture, oh, let me test my memory. It's the, it's a hack, it's a wrap hack based on the Alt Sew Over It Ultimate Pencil Skirt. And then the top is the new look, oh, what's it called? 
the jumpsuit that everybody made at one point. S 7085 or something? I'll put the I'll put the pattern in so you can see. Um, but yeah, that's the only thing I've ever made with Liberty Lawn. But on in the sale I spotted this. I love it. So let me tell you the information about it first. It is Liberty Supernova Tana Lawn um, in green. And it was two metres for £37.50. I think that must have been the sale price. I can't remember. And it's 100% cotton. The one thing that really I found very annoying on the Liberty website was I couldn't find where it said how wide the fabric was, which is obviously really important when you're trying to make sure you're buying enough fabric to make a certain project. Am I missing a trick? Can somebody tell me if I was just looking in the wrong place? But when you're buying expensive fabric from Liberty, well, I kind of expected their website to be a bit clearer in terms of that kind of information, but I'll forgive them because look at the pretty fabric. It's got, I don't know, I'll try and put it closer to the screen so you can see, but it's it's on a black background and it's teeny tiny little abstract splodges in like a mustard yellow and, a, and forest green and actually tiny flecks of like a cream and a red, but the like the, the main colour is green and I really like it. I know exactly what I want to make with this and I've already got the outfit in my head. This is destined to be a one of these. I've lost it. I found it. I want to make the V8772 blouse. I've made a couple of these now so I'm getting used to the pattern and it means I don't have to go through the whole toile and fitting process from scratch, which I love because it just makes it so much quicker. Um, and I think I just want to keep it simple with View D. View D is the version that's got kind of ordinary shirt sleeves with collar, with cuffs and like an ordinary collar. And I just think it would be so lovely in this nice crisp Tana lawn and I want to wear it to work. So for work I've got a pair of high-waisted black sort of smart, I guess they're sort of skinny leg but slightly chinoy type trousers. Um, and they, I just think, would look really nice with the black background in this. I think this would look really nice tucked into a pair of high-waisted black trousers for work. Um, and who knows, maybe I could dress it in a more casual way at the weekend as well. But that's what I've got lined up for this. I've picked up a couple of fabrics to help me with bra and lingerie making. Um, <laughs> that whole process has kind of ground to a halt. You may have seen my latest video, which was to do with buying a, uh, what was it? So long ago I can't even remember what my latest video was. I think it was a haul where I showed you all the um, fabrics and notions that I've been buying um, in order to pursue my lingerie making ambitions. Um, but I've been testing dyes on fabrics and it's all been a bit tricky and hasn't been quite working out how I wanted to so I've kind of <laughs> put that to, to, side, to the side for now while I get re-inspired to jump to it again. Um, but I needed some fabrics, so I picked up this cotton jersey. I mean, I probably won't even hold it up because it might make the colour go all funny. But it's basically just a simple cotton jersey. I bought it from Sew Me Sunshine. And in terms of the information, it was... So it's called the Maria White Cotton Jersey from Sew Me Sunshine. It's five pounds per half meter. I bought half a meter because it's just for making underwear. It's 95% cotton, 5% spandex, 148 centimeters wide and 215 GSM. Now, the reason I bought this is because I want to try dyeing it. Um, as you'll know, because I think I've shown you before, I've got a bunch of patterns that I'm working on for lingerie. I've got the Geordie Bralette by Emerald Erin. I've got the Chloe Thong by Evie La Louvre. And I've also got the Evie La Louvre suspender belt. And some of these patterns you can make in cotton jersey, including the Chloe Thong. 
and so I wanted some white cotton jersey. I don't actually want to make any white underwear, um, that's not so much my thing, but I want to dye, I want to test dyeing this cotton jersey, and I'm hoping that, because it's cotton jersey, I'm hoping it will take dye really well, and then I can make some nice colourful pet knickers. That's the plan. On a similar note, I also bought some white bra tool, which is this lovely lightweight um, soft bra tool. Um, again, I'm going to try dyeing it and see how that goes. I'm not really sure how that will work. Um, but this is bra tool from the bra shop, which is an Etsy shop, the bra shop, in white. And for half a metre, I paid £6.50. Um, I'm not actually sure what this is made of in terms of um, fibres. So who knows what it's going to be like to dye it, but I will report back. Last but not least, I shopped my stash for another fabric that I've basically been waiting for the seasons to change again for me to be inspired to make this. Um, this is a swimwear fabric, an ex-designer swimwear fabric that I bought from the new craft house. I think it must have been last year. And it's called Autumn Rose Swimwear and it's ex-designer, dead stock, £22 a metre and I bought just one metre. And as you can see, it's this, looks like a, I think it's a black background, and it's got these orange and red and yellow tones in it of flowers. It's very, like, my, you know, granny's curtains or whatever, but I, this gives me kind of slight Dolce & Gabbana vibes, and I want to make a swimsuit out of it. I'm thinking of making the, I haven't got the pattern yet, but I'm thinking of making the Edgewater Avenue Brook swimsuit and um, or using that as a base it's like straight across the front with little straps and I think it's slightly quite high legged at the sides but I'm not sure if I I know that the straight across neck really suits me when it comes to swimwear but I'm not sure if this fabric like deserves something a little bit more special. The straight neckline might work really well with such a busy fabric because it might, like it maybe a simple shape is better, but I'm quite intrigued to try creating some sort of ruching just to, to dip the neckline a little bit in the middle just to give it a slight sweetheart shape. Or I'm also playing around with the idea of creating like a little belt to go around it as well just to make it extra special. But um, yeah, <laughs> anyone in the UK will probably laugh at the fact that I'm making this video at this precise moment in time because we had the wettest May ever, well not ever, I don't think it was record breaking or anything, but we had a really really wet May, but we've, we're now on, I think it's the 2nd of June today as I'm recording this, and we've just had about five days of solid like summer weather, like it was 25 degrees, or 26 degrees I think at one point in London today, which for us it doesn't, it does get hotter than that, but very rarely, so this is full on summer weather we're experiencing for the last few days, so hence why I'm suddenly inspired to make swimwear because I'm not planning on going abroad this year and obviously the pandemic might not make that possible anyway. But I do have a couple of UK based staycations planned. Um, we're heading up to the Lake District at one point this summer and we've also booked to go to Devon later on in the summer and I'm really hoping that there might be nice enough weather to maybe wear a swimsuit on the beach. The great thing about making swimwear is that even with a metre of fabric, I'll probably have enough to make a swimsuit and a bikini, which makes me pretty happy. So there you have it. Those are all of the fabrics that I have either bought recently or that I have pulled out of my stash to prioritise within my sewing plans list. Um, please do give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you would like to see more of my videos. I'd also love to hear from you in the comments below if you have any ideas for patterns that I could use for a couple of those things that I wasn't so sure about. Um, you guys give such great suggestions so thank you. Um, I'll try not to leave it so long until my next video. I'm hoping to get a bit more back in, into the swing of filming videos regularly. But if you do want to see more from me in the meantime, then please do head over to my Instagram. I'll put the um, handle on the screen now and I'll link it below because I'm 
uh, I can be hit and miss on Instagram too, to be honest, but I do, especially on stories, I'll share things a bit more frequently. So if you want to see what I'm up to, see what my sewing progress is, then you can check me out over there too. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.